Welcome to A Week in My Life. Today we have got some cold brew that I am almost through. It's the Wandering Bear, is that what it's called? I have the version with the tap because we love it so much. We've tried so many cold brews. That is the best one. But a part of today's video is sponsored by Kohl's. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying that. Like, does not feel real. So we're gonna do a clothing try on haul. You're seeing some of it on me right now. But yeah, it's just been one of those days where I'm trying to get so much done because both of the girls are in care right now. You know what I mean? Like preschool slash daycare. And I only get a few of these days a week. So I try to really make the most of them. So I have a lot to still get done, but I tried the new Makeup Forever HD. Like it's their new glowy hydrating foundation medium coverage, which sounds right up my alley. I'll, we'll kind of go back in time here in a few minutes so you can see me applying it and we'll chat about it. So think about what you think of the way it looks and then we'll talk about it later. Just a little, little teaser, little teaser trailer. <laughs> but as I mentioned, this part of the video is sponsored by Kohl's. I truly shopped it as a kid. My mom shops there all the time. I shop there for myself, my husband, my kids, my sisters all shop there. I'm pretty sure my mother-in-law shops there. Kohl's is a big part of my life. So I'm very excited to be working with them on this video. I love Kohl's and I always have because the prices are so much more affordable and their clothes are flipping cute. They're so cute. They're always so trendy. I love going there for cute new pieces for different seasons. Like right now, I was picking out a couple new pieces for spring as we, well, kind of like the transition from winter into spring where it's still cool out. But then also I get a lot of my closet staples from there. And I actually, one thing I was looking for and I have been looking for is cute camisoles because I've been into more like chunky open cardigans and I never really know what to wear under it. So I have a few we're gonna try on today. Hopefully they'll work. The other thing is I love Kohl's cash. From this order alone, I think I got like 30 or $40 in Kohl's cash, which is amazing. So that is one reason why I have continually gone back and I know my mom, <laughs> my mom and sister love Kohl's cash too. So as I'm trying these things on, if there's anything you are interested in, I will have every single product linked down below in the description box. I'll also have it in a pinned comment and I'll have some sizing information down there, what my size was, if I think you should size up, down, or if it's true to size. Hopefully that helped you out in your shopping. All right, so let me show you what I picked up this time. We'll talk about what I'm loving. We're, I mean, I am literally trying all of this on for the first time. So hopefully everything fits well. We're gonna see. <laughs> I was ordering online, so you know. Okay, first up is this hoodie. So it's from the Sew brand. I, I would say most of what I ordered in this order was from that brand. The other brand I love, love, love is the Lauren Conrad brand. Oh my gosh, like that's probably my favorite, but so is like neck and neck. So I loved how this was kind of lightweight. I loved the knitted texture to it and the kind of different colors mixed in there. And it's got a hoodie, but like I said, untucked. It hits right at the hip, so it's not cropped. Thank you. <laughs> but I also like it kind of tucked in a little bit in the front. I just feel like it's one of those things you can wear with jeans, you can wear it with joggers, with athleisure. It can kind of work for both things. And again, for this transition into spring, it is so perfect. All right, and then these pants. I love that they are like real deal pants, but I love that they've got this cuffed part at the bottom. I'm gonna wear these a ton in the spring. I love this army green color and I love that it is stretchy. I'll put my sizing details below if you're kind of curious about if I think it's true to size or if you should size up, et cetera. But yeah, loving this combo together. Okay, oh my gosh, this is so cute. So this is one of those kind of shackets, but it's super lightweight. I love this color so much. I love that it's lightweight, again, thinking into spring. This is the camo, and totally, first of all, I tied it like that because I thought it was cute, but also 100% would just wear it out with leggings or joggers underneath. This is the new camisole I was trying. I love that it's got this lace detail. It's fitted, but not so tight that you feel like you can't breathe. I think I just have camisoles that fit me like before babies. I think that's the issue. They, I literally will put them on, I'm like, I can't breathe. <laughs> I need to just get rid of them, but these are so perfect. I love the little bit of a kind of lacy detail. I love that they're super stretchy and comfy. I don't feel like it's so skin tight that, like I said, I can't breathe. But this combo is really cute. And with these kind of cargo jogger pants, I feel like that's cute too. And it's really cute. Tied. They had a few different colors in this as well. Okay, I'm loving the brown as well. I've, I don't think I've ever owned a brown camisole, but I feel like this is one of those colors that I will end up wearing a lot. Again, it's the exact same one, just in brown, same lace detail. I have it in medium, by the way, which is my normal 
top size. So I would say just go true to size with it, but you could go up if you wanted it maybe a little looser, but and again, I think kind of cute with this outfit too. What is it about ruched tops that I just love? Like I remember these being really cool when I was in middle school. And so I just end up, anytime I see something ruched, I'm like, I, I would like, I want it. <laughs> so I'm excited these are coming back in style, but I love a good black and white striped top. This is great. It's a little bit longer if you wanted it to be longer. You could tuck it in, do whatever you want, obviously. <laughs> but there is something very classic to me about a black and white striped top and green pants. That is, I don't even know. Like throw a jean jacket on top, it's the perfect outfit. So the other gap in my wardrobe I was wanting to fill was cute short sleeve shirts that weren't t-shirts, but they weren't something like super dressy or that I would need a camisole under or something. I wanted it to be that I could throw it on. I don't need to worry about it being see-through. I don't need to pair it with anything, but it's a little bit cuter, a little bit more dressed up than just a regular t-shirt. I feel like this is what I would live in in the summer. So this one is really cute. <laughs> I did size up to a large for this one just because I, it looked like it might be slightly cropped. It's really not. I mean, I wouldn't consider this cropped, but I definitely am comfort more comfortable with the fit sizing up once. I just love the flower detail. I love the little purple bits. It's colors. I feel like I wouldn't have necessarily pinned together this like charcoal gray with the cream and the light purple. So pretty, super stretchy, super comfy. I love that it's ribbed and I love that it's got this kind of little detail around the sleeves and then around the bottom. So cute. And then I also got it in the purple one, purple. I, I thought pink was my favorite color. I think I'm realizing purple is actually my favorite color. So I've really been leaning into that and I love, love, love this color. Again, this is the exact same shirt, just in a different color. So this, <laughs> now I'm like thinking about my Kohl's cash that I have and I'm like, all right, when it's time to shop, I might get one more of these because I know this will just end up being what I wear a ton in the spring and summer for just like every day. So this next piece is a dress and I feel like it is the perfect heading into spring kind of dress, but it's a little bit different than a lot of the brighter florals you see. I loved this floral pattern. I love that the sleeve has, it kind of cuffs in twice to kind of give it a little more shape. Very pretty. I do think if you are a chesty person, this is not gonna be the dress for you. I'm just, it's just not. <laughs> but it is a little bit shorter than I typically go. I'm picking up kids, like it's just not comfortable for me to have a dress too far above the knee. So I would pair this with thick tights or leggings, something like that, like leggings and some cute like booty heels. But that's just me, but I absolutely love this and I love the cut of it here too. I just think it is so pretty. This is your PSA to update your pajamas. If you have not bought new fresh pajamas for yourself in a few years, it's time, it's time. I looked at my pajama drawer the other day and I was like, these are so old and ratted and like stained and just, I'm like, it's time. So. How fun are these? This is definitely my favorite kind of pajama set. Super soft, super stretchy. Love the bright colors, but I'm a big fan of long pants, short sleeves. Kohl's had so many pajama sets, you guys. But yeah, this one I love. It even has pockets. It's super comfy, super bright and fun. Can't wait to go to sleep. <laughs> okay, next try on thing are these shoes. These are from the Lauren Conrad brand. I don't think I've ever tried any of her shoes. I'm not sure that I even knew she made shoes, but first of all, I love ballet flats. These are just my favorite kind of shoes. They always have been. These are velvet with this little bow detail. They had a few different colors. I loved this navy blue. I have slightly wider feet and they are still super, super comfortable. Um, I, I just feel like this is gonna be my shoe that I reach for all the time. It would kind of match anything. You could wear it with a dress, you could wear it with cute jeans, whatever. And it just, it works, you know what I mean? It blends in, but I just love the feminine detail of the bow and then the velvet texture. So again, everything I just tried on, I will have linked down in the description box and a pinned comment in the order that I tried them on if you're interested in checking some of them out. As I said, I love Kohl's. I feel like it is such a great value, especially when you are trying to update your wardrobe, get some staples, maybe you're trying out a trend and you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a piece that you're not even sure you're going to like. <laughs> I just feel like Kohl's is perfect and they really span every kind of style, but also every age. <laughs> and I think that's really unique. Not every store does that and Kohl's does that really, really well. So thank you again to Kohl's for sponsoring this part of the video. Thank you guys for supporting me and watching this part of the video. And yeah, I need to go about my day. I need to um, 
actually get some work done at the computer. I need to watch through a video that my editors just sent me. It's supposed to go live today. So hopefully I don't have any edit requests. I've also been adding in little like, well, you've probably already seen them in this video, little pop-ups of my things that pop into my head when I'm going through the video. And that takes extra time. So hopefully I'll have the time to do that for the video that's going live today. Make the thumbnail, make the links, all those things. I'll take you with me. Let's go. I am currently getting ready. I just got here to the workspace. I had my Bible study earlier and now I am getting ready to get some work done, just go about my day. But I promised I would try and I want to try the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Ultra Glow. So we're gonna do that. So the original shade I bought is 1R02. Then I learned they have minis and 1R02 was definitely a little too dark for me, but they only have a few shades in the minis, of course. <laughs> so I got the next shade down that they had in this, which is 1N00, way too light. So we're gonna mix these today and see. I have not tried this before, but it sounds like right up my alley, kind of hydrating, kind of glowy. So it says this 86% skincare-based formula hydrates, plumps, and boosts your skin immediately and over time. Its lightweight texture syncs with your skin for a blur effect and even complexion. In an ultra natural radiant finish, buildable medium coverage, we're about to find out. I do need to put on some sunscreen. I've been trying to do it every day, but I feel like in the winter I've been a little more lax. So I'm trying to get back into doing it because, you know, I'm by a window, sunlight comes in through there. I'm still outside from time to time. It's just a good habit to be in. And this is the Elta MD UV Restore. I love any Elta MD SPF, but I definitely like their tinted ones typically better. This one is not tinted. I don't think the white cast is too bad, but it's definitely like it takes a beat for it to kind of go away. But generally I like their sunscreens. But I just feel like this is one I wouldn't want to wear on its own just because of the white cast. So let me show you these two shades as they are. So there they are, there's the lighter one, the darker one. I mean, if I were choosing, I would choose that one, but we're gonna kind of mix them and see. Yeah, this looks like a much better shade match. So that's just what we're gonna do. Actually just found, one of you guys sent this to me years ago and I still have it and love it. This little Mickey Mouse mixing palette. So we're just gonna put a little bit of these and just gonna kind of <laughs> mix it up in his little eyeball. <laughs> Not even sure that it's really mixing that well. I might use my, all right, give it a whirl. That I have this light here too. Definitely looking hydrating. So with it and without, definitely uh, medium coverage is definitely what I'd say. We can build it a little bit if we want, but just kind of want to get a first pass and see how we like it. I'm gonna try a brush for this side. I feel like the white cast of this uh, sunscreen is really throwing me off, which is gonna drive me nuts. I'm gonna try just the dark shade on my forehead, just out of curiosity, because I'm like, maybe it's not as dark as I think it is, you know? So I'm thinking 1R02, like I just did that alone on my forehead and it looks totally perfect. So I'm thinking maybe I could return the mini and keep the full size of the RO2 that I thought would maybe be a little dark, and especially as we're going into warmer weather and there, you know, there's the chance I might look a little less pale. Dealing with a little bit of like skin peeling right now on my nose and on my chin. So I'm trying to ignore that because I know that's not the foundation. Like I've been using my favorite foundations lately and they're doing that too, so it's just my skin. But on everywhere else, I mean, it looks, it looks really nice. It's definitely hydrating. I would probably set my T-zone, but I'm really liking the way it looks and coverage level, it is exactly, exactly what I want if I'm taking the time to put on a foundation. So yay for that. I'll keep updating you guys, of course, and I'll have a speed reviews video coming soon. I recently got all of my keepsakes together, like things from my childhood, things I'd put away, things my parents maybe have put away. Um, and most of the keepsakes I'd recently like 
seen and known that I had were things from high school. And so it was a long time ago, but not that long ago. I mean, <laughs> it depends on who you ask. But anyway, my point is there were things from my childhood that I just thought were lost. Like I hadn't seen in de literal decades. So when my parents moved into the house, like when I was entering high school, I want to say somewhere around then, we moved into a new house. And that was, of course, over, <laughs> over 20 years ago. And so thinking through that, I did not realize they had this box here from my like deep childhood that I did not know existed. So I've got it all together. I'm kind of going through stuff. I have way too many things. So I'm, I'm kind of going through, uh, but one of the things I thought was lost to time was my baby blanket that I loved so hard, as you can tell. And it, like, even to the point where when we were, and I was probably like five or six, I don't know. We visited family in Mississippi when I was a kid and I'd accidentally left this behind at my aunt's house and we had drove, we were driving home to Indiana. We were like almost there and I'm crying about it. So my aunt ended up sending it to us in the mail and I was so overjoyed. I did not know I still had this. So when I tell you that when I saw this, I just sobbed, I sobbed and sobbed. It was, I don't, I can't even explain that feeling if you've ever felt it where you just thought, and it's silly, I know it's a thing. It was just one of those moments, you guys just, Incredible, but lots of random things like this was from my grandmother, this porcelain doll I had like up on my dresser my whole childhood. Um, also found Raggedy Ann. If you didn't know, James Whitcomb Riley like lived in Indiana. I, or I think he like lived here his whole life. I don't know. Um, and he's a poet that wrote the Raggedy Ann and Andy story. So uh, seals were my favorite animal. So I had quite a few seals. But this is what's so difficult. Like how many of these kinds of things do I really keep? Like the obvious keep, definitely. This was my teddy bear, teddy bear, missing eye and all. So like, that's an obvious keep. I had a poo bear I've already like given to the girls they've been playing with, so that makes sense. But you know, I know I love seals. These were like representative of that, but I don't remember playing with these. So are these things that I get rid of? Another tip I heard, which I'm definitely gonna institute today is anything that you're like, I just don't need to keep the actual object, but I want this memory to just take a picture of and have an album. Like I would just create an album on my phone today save all of those pictures of my almost keepsakes in digital format. It's not the craziest idea. So I'm going to do that just to kind of scratch the itch of not wanting to get rid of certain things, but I'm trying to balance it. Like Tyler was reminding me, I'm very into decluttering, but he was like, you know, remember these are mementos that could be meaningful to my kids one day. So not to go crazy and declutter at all, but I definitely have way too much. Look at this creepy doll. Gigi agrees that that's gonna go. I don't remember this at all. I should probably send a picture up to my sisters and ask like, was this any of your guys's before I get rid of it? But finding that balance of not getting rid of too much, keeping enough, but I still, oh, that's what I was gonna say. I still have all my old CDs, like a whole tote. So I, there are a few Broadway cast recording albums that because that was, is still, but was such a big part of my life. Certain ones of those, I will keep the case, the CDs and all, but a lot of them like, I don't need, I can access them anywhere. I also have an entire tote of my fifth grade, specifically fifth grade class work. That was my favorite year. It's no wonder I ended up teaching fifth grade. That worked out really well. I wish I had seen all of this before I taught fifth grade. Cause I think there were some really cool ideas that te my teacher did that I'm like, dang, like I would have totally instituted that in my classroom, just cool stuff. But that is the project I'm working on right now. Hopefully I can be level headed. <laughs> with all of this, we'll see. I did buy another tote to kind of put, a lot of these totes are under the bed totes and none of our beds are really great for that. Like none of these would fit. They're just not a great storage solution if you aren't putting them under a bed. So I bought a new tote just for this stuff. So all my keepsakes, instead of being in one, two, three, four, five, six different things, they can all be in one. But the tote I got, I think is way too big. I ordered it online, mistake number one. So we're gonna see what I end up with. Maybe it'll be, exactly what I need, but it's just gonna end up being too heavy to like move around. Not that I'd be moving my keepsakes a lot, but anyway. So if you have not gone through your keepsakes and you know you have a lot, might be fun to take a trip down memory lane. I have like an hour and a half to somehow complete this because I wanna get it done. These have been sitting around for a while and they're kind of in the way and um, Lissy's only gonna nap for like that much longer, so I better get to work. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so here's an example of something I would definitely keep. My very first play script. I think this was the first play I was ever in. 
I mean, you know, like that is an easy no brainer. But the recorder book, I'll probably keep my first recorder. Do I keep the book? Maybe, <laughs> probably not. A little nod to my Girl Scout days, ooh baby. I think I was in it for like one year. <laughs> this is one thing though that like, I, I don't know if you've ever felt this, but I had this weird tinge of familiarity when I saw it. But then when I really thought about it, I'm like, but I don't really remember like playing with this or who it was from. I remembered loving this little, like that it had a little tushy, you know, what do you even call that? And it's a, a lion that's wearing pajamas and it says King of Love, like with the Valentine's hearts. I asked my parents if they knew if I got this from someone or like, and they were like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't either. So I think it's one of those things that even though it feels familiar to me, there is no direct like attachment to it. So that'd be one that I would definitely donate, maybe let the girls play with. A lot of cards that I kept. So I'm kind of going through and keeping ones that were memorable or from someone I love or just someone that used to be a good friend. So it's just fun to go down memory lane. But if it's ones that just are like, you know, Merry Christmas in the name, I'm gonna get rid of. <laughs> So like, honestly, I think these are the two dolls I will probably keep and then my blankie for sure. Okay, maybe the greatest 1990s treasure I found was this little Valentine's sleeve, apparently be made in class. And this had to have been mid to late 90s. And I found the Valentine's from that year, Lisa Frank. A lot of Looney Tunes, multiple Casper. Oh my gosh. Aladdin, more Lisa Frank, 101 Dalmatians, like incredible. This is truly like a time capsule. This, that is a keep. That's just making me so happy. I know you're proud of me, I went to the gym. <laughs> I have not, like the only times I've gone in recent months has been like with Tyler, we'll go together. And I needed to rip the band-aid of myself going alone again. And I know that sounds weird. I can't explain it. You either get it or you don't. I don't know how to explain it. So anyway, it was really good. And I ended up having a good workout, even though like heading here, I was like, I don't have the energy. I don't feel like it. It's like 4 p.m. ish. And anyway, so um, really proud of myself. Wanted to share. Uh, I am about to head home. And I think what we're going to do for dinner tonight is homemade crunch wraps, you know, like Taco Bell. We make ours with tofu sometimes. We sometimes make it with ground meat. You could do ground turkey, ground beef, whatever. We have tofu right now, so that's how I'm gonna make it. But it's really good, it's pretty simple. If we end up making that tonight, I will show it to you. I don't think we have any other dinners planned this week, so I'm pretty sure that that that's it. Like that's what's left on our meal plan for the week. So I'm super hungry. I can usually make it kind of fast. Tyler's gonna go get the girls, so hopefully I can kind of get a head start before they get home and you know, the chaos ensues. <laughs> Here we go. Well, it would not be a brawn dinner time <laughs> if it didn't involve going to the store for like one or two ingredients we needed for the dinner, which is what I just did. So I just got back again, um, but we're good. We didn't have salsa. Actually we did, but it was my favorite. It was a mango peach salsa, which would not be right in this. So I got just a kind of more classic salsa. So I've got the protein, if you will, I've got the tofu cooking right now. The other thing you make for this is a cashew queso, which you could just use cheese. If you, obviously this is a vegan recipe, but, um, but I happen to really like the cashew queso. All it is is cashews, water, and green chilies. Something about that combo is delicious. And we always have some leftover, which is just really good for like grabbing some tortilla chips and dipping it in that like the next day or two. But this time we are going to do something different. If you picture a Taco Bell crunch wrap, it also has lettuce and tomato on it. So I was looking at a couple of other recipes. I do have a tomato, so I'm gonna dice that up and put it on there. We never do, but we love tomatoes, so I don't know why we haven't. But instead of lettuce, we were gonna do black beans because Tyler loves them. It'll honestly probably end up going farther, meaning we'd be able to make more, have more left over, which is always nice for either dinner tomorrow or quick lunches, whatever. So uh, the other thing we're doing differently, a lot of variables is we actually got tostadas to use for the crunchy part of it, which is what you're supposed to do. But we've always just used tortilla chips because you can kind of layer it on there and it still works. But we figure, you know, we'll do it legit. So that is the task at hand. The other thing I might throw in there is diced avocado. I'm having a moment with avocados, so my mouth is just watering talking about it. <laughs> so it's literally just whatever the meat or whatever you use and then salsa and taco seasoning. And then you can also dice up chipotle peppers in it. Honestly, that's just one more thing I didn't have to buy. 
So I don't feel like I noticed the difference without it, but if you're super into chipotle peppers, by all means. But yeah, we'll get this cooked real nice, and that's pretty much it for this part of it. So cashews are in the food processor. You need two teaspoons of taco seasoning, and then a cup of water, and then two cans of diced green chilies. That's it, you literally just blend it up. It tastes so, so good. Oh my gosh. And I'm not even big on cashews, but I mean, I don't, please, I don't not like cashews, but you know what I mean. I mean, it's so good, you guys. Mm. You can keep whirring it around to really get the nuts chopped up even more. I don't mind a little bit of crunch to it, but if you would, but oh my gosh, so good. So good. Okay, so Tyler's actually taken over because I was just dealing with the girls. But anyway, so basically this is it. We layer on the queso, the protein, whatever you make, black beans, whatever toppings you want. And then that is when you take the tostada, put it on there. And then Tyler, I might need you to, I'm trying to one hand this. Mm -hmm. You literally, you just kind of fold it in. And that's pretty much it. So you lay it seam side down on the hot pan to brown both sides. So we're gonna take that, put it in here, brown that, and then it'll stay together. And then you brown the other side, that's it. Because mm -hmm. everything inside that needed to be cooked or warmed is already cooked and warmed. It's perfect. I feel like they're looking a little sad, but I promise they are so delicious. They are so much more yummier than they look. But we went skimpy on the filling because we you always struggle to like close it. We definitely could have done more filling, but we end up putting more of the cashew queso on top, some sour cream. I am so excited to dig into this. <laughs> it just doesn't look as good as I think it is in my mind. The hair. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. <laughs> I wanted to share a quick little declutter because I'm slowly going through my entire collection and really, truly giving it a hard look. I talked about this in another video I did recently, way more in detail, kind of my thoughts about the, the future of my makeup collection to make it sound dramatic, but you know what I mean. With the rate that I use makeup, and obviously I'm always trying new makeup, but just really thinking critically about do I really need this big collection? A lot of which is just going bad that I can't possibly use up. And if it's not an absolute favorite, do I really need to keep it, I guess. So slowly but surely decluttering. I'm still not sure if I want to just do like a quick rip the band-aid off crazy declutter on my own or film it, or if I'd rather kind of go through it slowly. So I will figure that out. But in the meantime, I want to share just a handful, like 10 products that I am decluttering today that I just figured I'd share, give some quick thoughts on. So first up, the Huda Beauty One Coat Wow Mascara. This was way too dry. It has to be to do the one coat, but I mean, it got to the point where three weeks in, I was like, I can't, e I can't even use this. You know what I mean? It was just at that level of too dry, too clumpy right off the bat. So yes, it gives an insane, insane amount of volume. You know what? I'll just apply some now, just so you can see. I don't have any mascara on anyway, so I might as well. Wish me luck. It's got a nice comb to it, but you have to just, I guess my thing is you have to be really, really careful with it. I've noticed, and you really can't layer on a second coat because it'll dry. But one coat, I mean, really does give serious volume. So I think it's for someone. It's not that the product itself is just so terrible, but I just, the way I like to layer mascara, I just don't think it's for me. So I'm glad I tried it. I would have always been curious, but I don't think I would need to buy it again. And it starts to get, yeah, like really kind of, clumpy is almost not the right word. I guess it is clumpy, but where it'll give you three lashes because it just starts to stick together. So not terrible. There you go. The only makeup I'm wearing, by the way, is the uh, Herborean BB Cream, still a fave, all over my face. And then Natasha Denona Concealer, the new Benefit Brow Tinted Brow Gel. I can't think of the name, but I'll link it below. It's like brand new. It's a little bit darker and a little bit redder than I typically go. So I don't know that the shade is quite right. And that's it. And of course you just saw what I put on my eyes. I am wearing the Milk Odyssey. What is beeping? Our baby bone there. Um, the Milk Odyssey gloss in, I can't think of the name, but again, I'll link it below the gloss I'm wearing. It is, it is definitely a favorite. <laughs> Speaking of glosses, I actually put this on first and that was the moment I decided to get rid of it. It's the House Labs 
PhD Hybrid Lip Oil in Primary. I actually like the formula, but this color is so pink. And the mixture of this with the natural color of my lips looks, in my humble opinion, so bad that I just couldn't, I, I can't, I can't. There's going to be no instance where I want to wear this unless it were over another lipstick so that you couldn't see the color as much. But I have so many other glosses I would reach for over this anyway that I, there's just no point. So that one is also going to go. This one I tried three days ago. Again, it's the Bobbi Brown Crush Lip Color in Lilac. It just looked really dry on my lips. Again, I have way too many lipsticks to mess around with ones that I don't like. So it is a pretty color though. It's kind of a unique, more blue toned color, but I just didn't like the way my lips looked with it. So the Essence Keep Me Covered is gonna go. I feel like I can get this to look really nice sometimes and then other times it looks terrible. I never know what I'm gonna get with this and I don't like that. Again, I have too many foundations to mess around with that. So I'm also gonna get rid of the ColourPop Twist of Slate. I don't even know if they still sell this eyeshadow palette. It was really cool. It was kind of paired with their set in stone one that's more warm tone and I definitely like that one better just based on the colors I wear. I barely use this, so I'm definitely gonna see if a sister or someone would want that. I'm gonna finally get rid of this. I kept it thinking I would use it. I tried this on camera so long ago, and I really, really liked it, but I have not reached for it since then. I wanna say I tried this on camera like at when I was in the room that Gigi's now in, like filming there years and years ago. It's the Makeup by Mario Master Metals palette. It's really cool, you use like a mixing medium to mix into there. It makes like this liquid cream shadow. It's gorgeous, I just never reach for it. I hated this. This is the OG Sculpted Face Stick in Pink Diamond. This was not great, just really not good. It was one of those Facebook ads. They made it look so like too good to be true. I had the bronzer of this too, and I think I've already decluttered that. This is the blush stick. Do, and it was not cheap, you guys, so do not be tempted, okay? They make it look incredible. It is one of the worst blushes. The blush, I think, if I remember right, was a little bit better than the bronzer, I will say, but no, do not spend the money on that. The NYX Smooth Whip Matte Lip Cream, I just, eh, you know? It was, it was fine. It's very much like they've made this kind of product a thousand times. They just have, this is not a color I would enjoy anyway. On the internet, like when I was shopping for it, it looked a lot better if I remember right. It's in the shade Laundry Day though, which I do love. I love the name of that. Okay, this is one of those where I've gone back and forth on the NARS Light Reflecting Eye Brightener. I got it in Night Swan. It's kind of like an under eye corrector but it has this reflective quality to it. See, this makes me want to try it again. Every time I swatch this, I'm like, well, let me try it. Maybe I'll put it in my drawer. It has been a while since I've tried it, but I remember every time I tried it, not being super impressed. So where in the world do I have it? I keep digging my nail into it. It's kind of this creamy corrector cream. I should like it. I love products like this, but every time I've used it, I haven't been happy. So I'm gonna use it one more time, then decide before, but I remember it reflecting too much and it just, it looked, a little odd and so then I would set it and it just didn't look good that way either. So I'm like, okay, what am I doing then? I'm just, you know, treading water. And then the last thing I'm gonna get rid of only because it is super old is the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation. I love this stuff. I had the shade 220 Beige. I am such a fan of this, but it's super old. The last few times I've used it, I'm like, this isn't quite right. Like it doesn't quite smell right either. So just time for that one to go. That's my declutter. My thoughts on like trying things slowly like this, where I'm like pulling out a few lip products I haven't used in a while, trying them in the next few days, and then deciding then keep or toss. Like that in my mind probably makes the most sense because there are plenty of products that I just haven't given enough love to that I might, if I actually tried them more, end up loving or realize very quickly like, okay, absolutely not. So if this was helpful to you, let me know. I could do more of a less of a like sit down style declutter where you're like, you know, looking at my collection and more like this where I'm just sitting and sharing what I'm getting rid of. They're just two very different vibes, right? Like two very different style of videos. So I'll figure it out, but I'm gonna end the vlog here. Again, thank you to Kohl's for sponsoring a part of this video. If you want to check out any of the products that I tried on at the beginning of the video, I will have links for everything at Kohl's down in the description box. I will also have the links in a pinned comment because I know it can be hard to find the description box sometimes, just depending on where you're watching it. So I'll link it in a pinned comment as well. It might be easier to find, but I hope you enjoyed. If you wanna check more of my vlogs out, I will link my playlist of all of my vlogs in order from most recent to least recent. You can see if you miss any in there. If this is your first video of mine, welcome. I hope you'll subscribe. Stick around for more vlogs. I do vlogs 
at this point almost weekly, certainly three or four times a month. So I hope you've been enjoying them. I know I've been enjoying making them and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.